Good morning. Thanks very much for joining us. These are trying times in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. State tax revenue receipts are softer than expected. Uh, and changes, potential changes to the federal health care law could have a major impact on our finances and our economy. Let's talk about that and more with our guest this morning, the president of the Massachusetts Senate, State Senator Stan Rosenberg of Amherst. Mr. Thank president, you. Good morning. welcome. Happy to be with you. Good morning to you. It's always good to have you, sir. So as we're taping this on Thursday, our viewers know we tape in advance. Can't yes. fool them. Um, the U.S. House is expected to vote on the Republican health care plan, a plan that apparently very few, if anybody, has actually read. The Congressional Budget Office hasn't had a chance to evaluate it and score it. Governor Baker this week warned that based on what we know about it, it could result in, quote, a massive loss of critical funds for the Commonwealth. What do you see as the potential impact of what's going on on us? Well, first, we're going to count on the U.S. Senate to do the right thing and make sure that if a plan moves forward, it's rational, reasonable, and doesn't gut the budgets and the programs in the various states. But it's a huge hit to Massachusetts uh, because, as you remember, we had a universal care plan before the federal government did theirs. They uh, made a series of changes which compromised our plan. We had to adapt because it was federal law. So we're just barely holding on because it's now 42% of the state budget. And with these potential cuts, it will be very, very hard for the budget, uh, for us to balance the budget and to meet our health care needs. Well, back in March, when the earlier iteration of the Republican plan was floated and then flopped, uh, Governor Baker estimated a $2 billion hit over the yeah. course of the next few years here. Yeah. What would that mean to life here in the Commonwealth? Well, it would mean that we would be forced into really taking a very, very hard look at the budget and deciding are we doing what the people need in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts so we can maintain our robust economy and our very high ranking. Remember U.S. News and World Report just a few weeks ago said we were the number one state in the country to live in and work in and, and have a business in. And that's because of the cooperation of the business community and the government and because of the public investment in the government programs that help support the economy. So at that point, we'd have to revisit our tax system and we'd have to uh, revise our tax system to have a 21st century tax system to, rep to uh, fund the 21st century government that we need to support our economy. Well, let's talk about taxes, Mr. Yes. President. You've been a, a forthright advocate of a yes vote on a uh, ballot question that will be on the year. ballot uh, a year from this fall yes. uh, that would raise the income tax on uh, people earning over a million dollars. Uh, that would raise how much revenue? 1.6 to 2.2 2 is the, the yes. 2.2 .2 billion. billion. So the hole that would be blown in our budget by, conceivably by the Republican health care would basically potentially wipe out yes, all also, the gains from that. But all that money is earmarked for two things that the business community said we need, increased investment in education and transportation. It doesn't even touch health care. But the bottom line is it the new revenue the budget and, would and already be... It would be gone. Totally gone. Well, I mean, so w what's the way out? Are you look? Do, do you think we need to look at additional broad-based tax hikes? First, we have to look at all of the tax expenditures, all of the loopholes that we have, exceptions that we make in the tax code for this purpose or that purpose, and see if they still make sense. And the ones that don't make sense, we don't need. Pull them out, and that will that could yield hundreds of millions and even billions of additional dollars of revenue just by getting rid of loopholes. All right, I, I'm going to. We'll stay on that topic sure. after we take a short break and we'll continue our conversation with State Senate President Stan Rosenberg in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're talking with State Senate President Stan Rosenberg, and I'm sorry if we're bumming you out on this Sunday morning, but... You know, it's really hard. They're having breakfast. It's just depressing. the family, and we're knocking it out of the park with all of this bad talk. Well, uh, we're talking about the prospect, you say the increasingly likely prospect of tax hikes to not just fund the initiatives we want, but to make up for losses we might incur from, from the federal, government. from the federal government's right. health care changes. Um, just uh, the day before you came to tape with us uh, here on a Thursday, uh, the revenue figures for April, which is the biggest tax collection yeah. month, of the, uh, month of the year, came and in, and they're not, the revenues they're tanked. Not good. They're not good. So 
uh, and this comes on top of soft, very soft job growth numbers. Yeah. So uh, my understanding is that the governor and the House Speaker both are of the philosophy that when the economy is teetering, when it's soft, Arguably, one of the worst things you could do is raise taxes. You don't buy that theory. Nobody likes to raise taxes any time, but there are times when you have to do it in order to support and sustain what you need in order to run the society. But you don't think that's going to scare off investment and business lots growth? Of people don't want to raise taxes when the economy is going well because uh, we're getting reasonable amount of revenue in. They don't want to raise taxes when the economy is soft. The bottom line is build the budget figure out what you need to do and then figure out how to pay for it and uh, we are not profligate spenders in Massachusetts we basically are investing in public services that support the economy and support a quality of life that the people here in the Commonwealth want and we have lots of ta uh, loopholes in our tax system we have uh, things that we do not do in the state that other states do that we should take a look at because um, we now have a service driven economy as opposed to a manufacturing economy. And so uh, a lot of what we're doing is not working. Give me an example of what you consider to be one of the most wasteful tax loopholes. Um, I'm not going to call it wasteful. I'm going to say that it's, it's, uh, it's inappropriate. We have two right now that we're dealing with. Um, if you uh, take a room through Airbnb, you don't pay the hotel motel tax. And if you... Uh, uh, register for a hotel room online rather than picking up the phone and calling the hotel you don't pay uh, the sales tax so those two it's not big dollars but it is emblematic of the fact that the economy is changing as the economy changes you have to update the tax code so that you're being fair to the other businesses and you're also generating the revenue mr president we ran out of time before i had a chance to talk with you about an initiative you and the senate are proposing that is sort of a blueprint for how you'd like to invest those potential revenues Kids from the so-called how can people go online and find out more about it until we have a chance to talk legislative further? website go to the senate page click on Kids First Initiative. All right, I urge you to do that because it's very interesting. I wish we had more time, but you, come back friend. again soon. Look forward to it. Appreciate it. Senate President Stan Rosenberg. That's it for me. Now, it's back to my colleagues for more WBZ News.